ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Dave. I'm back in the flesh for another legendary video. Appreciate you guys coming through and showing your love of sport. More importantly, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be always notified when anything is going on from my channel. Tonight's Monday Night Raw really truly hit was a home run when it came to everything that accumulated on the red brand. We had so many great matches leading up to the battle in the bash in Berlin as we had so many great things going on and it was intriguing. It kept me invested. More importantly, the main event really was the home run of the night as things were great when it came to the two out of three falls match for the Intercontinental Championship as we had Big Braun Breaker taking on Sami Zayn. We also had the number one contenders match for the Women's Tag Team Championship as we had EO Sky and Kairi Sane taking on Zoe Starks and Shayna Baszler. As well as tonight, we end up having a big Odyssey Jones making his actual in-ring debut, which was impressive. He finally made his in-ring brand debut, actually getting physical in the ring on the red after two years. As well as we had big Damian Priest, one of the Terra Twins, taking on Judgment Day, looking to get his vengeance as he took on Carlito in a decent match. As well as we had no other than American Alpha, or not even American Alpha, American Made, as they were in tag team actions, which is the Creed Brothers, taking on no other than Alpha Academy's Otis, and as well as Akira Tozawa. We also had on the card tonight Randy Gordon's appearance, and luck, it was a face-to-face -face off when it came to the World Heavyweight Champion Gunther, who's looking to put himself into harm's way, but more importantly, you can't trust the Viper, as you never know when an RKO may come out of nowhere. As well as on tonight, we had appearance from Rhea Ripley, who addressed the situation that happened at SummerSlam, and so much more. But let's go ahead and get into the show. Appreciate you guys coming through and show your love and support. And let's get it off, start off when it came to no other than Rhea Ripley, who got things underway when it came to tonight with the in-ring segment. She said that she was a little timed and also ticked off when it came to things that happened. She was thinking about everything that happened at SummerSlam. She relieved everything in her head. More importantly, she felt all the emotions, and she felt the situation like this was embarrassing, and it was heartbreaking. But then she said the feeling she is feeling right now is pissed off as hell. And Dominic Mysterio stabbed her in the back. And that is a true fact. He did some things which wasn't on the, on the radar. As well, she said Dominic Mysterio... Um, probably something that he never heard before, but it just wasn't deep enough. Liv Morgan managed to run away when Re with Rhea Ripley's championship, but Morgan can't run forever. As well as she said, Rhea bloody Ripley, and more importantly, it's time for her to re be reminded that exactly who she is on the red brand. Liv Morgan interrupted her with along with Dominic Mosquito. When they were in a skybox, Morgan got on the mic, and she had a whole lot to say. Liv Morgan noted that the Daddy Dom has some things that he wants to get off his chest. The crowd ended up being red hot, and they were booing the hell out of both of them. As Dominic tries to speak, he, he drowned out by the boos, but he couldn't get things off. Ripley tells the crowd she wants to hear what Dominic's excuses are. Dominic says he left Rhea Ripley because he's the man now. He deserved to be treated like one. Ripley tried to change him instead of letting Dominic be Dominic. Instead of the woman who bosses him around, forced him to call him mommy, and he was the and the woman who calls now he got a woman that calls him daddy. Dominic says he has tendencies where basically whatever he wants, and he gets his tendies, and he plays video games all day long. But when it comes to that situation, Dominic was the one that actually started off with that situation by calling her mommy. So I don't know what he's talking or referring to that situation. He started the situation and it blew up and it went from there. When it comes to the situation of being his own man, he could have been done that a long time ago. Rhea basically gave full range. She wanted him to grow up and become his own man. But now he's with the hot girl pretty much when it comes to Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan basically just undercut through things and got what she wanted and manipulated. And now she got the, the Judgment Day in her pocket as well. She has Dominic Mysterio. It's going to continue to be intriguing to see how things may unfold. But more importantly, I know this Women's World Championship is going to mean a lot 
when they go to battle. I'm not sure if the championship match is going to be at Bash in Berlin or it's going to be at Bad Blood. But oh, whatever match it's going to be in is probably most likely going to either be in a Hell in a Cell. They're going to have a women's one. We most likely will. And it's going to see how things may accommodate when it comes to this actual match. How the storyline continue to be invested as the Terra 10 twins are looking to get their vengeance. And things are going to continue to be progressing throughout the whole entire coverage. Morgan ends up helping Dominic finally beat his dad, but dad. And then also she said that Ripley tells Dominic that she actually is proud of him, of the man he became over the last few years. When it comes to Dominic's dad, Ripley wanted him to do it on his own, which is true. That makes you say, hey, you are a true man in your word. You got it done it without no help. The crowd boos Morgan while Morgan tells Ripley everything she has, Morgan has taken. Ripley says the mistake Morgan made is she left her standing. And Ripley exclaims that, that Morgan will have to kill her to stop her. With a smirk on her face, Rhea Ripley stated that it's going to be a good thing that Morgan likes the sound of her own voice. Because we all know where, where that goes. Morgan and Dominic looks confused. Damien Peace appears right behind them. And he ends up grabbing Dominic as... Liv Morgan scattered out of there very quickly, and the fight began as initially Dom Mysterio got beat down by Damian Priest, and then actually through the curtain side, and pretty much everything broke down from there. Eventually, no other than Rhea Ripley was able to catch Liv Morgan, but she was going like the wind. She jetted out of there so quickly. But then we got things started after they came back from the commercial break of Damian Priest versus Carlito which was a big banger, and you got everything that you wanted when it came to this legend of Carlito showing Damian Priest how to keep things smart and smoothly, and the match was cool for what it was. The match started off um, red hot when it came to Priest dropping Carlito face first with a flapjack. Then Priest calls for the Southern Heaven, but Carlito rolls directly out the ring, giving chase directly to him. Priest sends Carlito back into the ring and then set up a razor's edge. Carlito reverses it into a DDT and then leapfrog into a face buster by Priest. Carlito kicks out at a two count and things proceeded to go from there in the match. Priest goes for the top rope and then Carlito cut him off and both men traded shots and Priest knocks Carlito down for the canvas. Carlito runs into the ropes and which forced Priest to lose his balance and suplex by Carlito. Then after the break, they had a couple breaks in between this match. Carlito is working over Damian Priest. And then Priest fires up and then lands a spinning heel kick to keep things get back in the momentum of his corner. Back to himself. After the furious strikes, Priest lands a running elbow in the corner, followed by a broken arrow. Carlito ducks the clothesline and lands a super kick. And Priest lands a kick of his own and then a lariat by Damian Priest. And Priest hits a Southern Heaven to pick up the victory for the one, two, and then the three. Afterwards, the match, the Judgment Day hits the ring and they end up attacking Damian Priest. Rhea Ripley music hits with that brutality. You know, you, you got to get something serious. Rhea Ripley runs down the ramp. Carlito cuts her off. But Rhea Ripley kicks Carlito below the belt to low blow him. And then Balor ends up standing face to face with Ripley. Damian Priest tries to super kick him, but JD pushes Balor out the way and eats the kick instead. As things progress, Balor runs directly up the ramp as Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest hugs each other after meeting in the middle and directly in the ring. Dominic Mysterio tried to attack from behind, but Big Damian Priest caught him off and grabbed him by the throat as he was dropping down trying to hit Rhea Ripley from behind. Then things really continue to pick off as he threw Dominic directly right into the wind of Rhea Ripley, who's about to set up for the rip tie. But of course, Liv Morgan came down to assist Dominic Mysterio from getting into the actual harm's way. And they both, the lovely couple, ended up running directly away after the situation broke down. But things really got more intriguing as they ended up getting JD McDonough. And ended up hitting him with that sub in heaven and taking him directly down. And things broke down after that situation as the rest of the Judgment Day were looking on looking highly pissed. Then we have a backstage um, segment with Ivy Niles asking Maxine Dupree to join the Creed Brothers and Chad Gable with the new official group. 
Dupree tells Niles that she's staying with her family in the academy, and Niles says she knew Dupree would say that, and she ended up walking away. Then we get to Odyssey Jones, who's getting ready to prepare for Monday Night Raw, and he comes directly out with the New Day. He takes on Vincent Winnie. Winnie charges in and attacks as soon as the bell rings, but the referee pulls off Winnie away. Jones fires back and then tosses Winnie clearly across the ring. He body slams him, and then Jones lands two rolling sentons. Winnie stumbles into the corner and then a running cross body block by Jones as the big man took him down. Winnie lands a few strikes, but Winnie hits the ropes and runs right into the boss man slammed by Jones, who picks up the victory over the local um, Vincent Winnie. Things continue to progress as we ended up having the final testament coming down. They had a nice little segment. Um, Woods look unenthusiastic after Jones' victory, but the final testament continued to accuse Kingston of trying to use Jones to replace Big E, which is kind of like a shot. But no, they need to be a three-man group to keep things kind of smooth and kind of keep us invested. The crowd boos at Cross and tells Woods um, Kingston is using Jones to replace him as well. But now and importantly, Woods asks Cross if he isn't tired of trying to drive a wedge between them. It's not going to work. Wood tries to challenge for a tag team match, but Kofi Kingston grabs the mic, which kind of irritated um, Xavier Woods a little bit. But Kingston grabs the mic and says that he should, that they should have a six-man tag instead. And Cross accepts. Woods looked visibly annoyed, and things were accepted by the Final Testament. As we're here next week, going to have a six-man tag of the Final Testament taking on this new branch of the New Day and Odyssey Jones, which is going to be a banger. But of course, that may turn to the point of Xavier Woods turning heel. I would not be surprised in this. This looks like it's very predictable, but we shall see how next week turns out. Backstage, we end up having Drew McIntyre walking backstage. He walks into Adam Pierce's office. He tells Pierce that McIntyre, that CM Punk isn't here tonight due to travel issues. McIntyre says he doesn't care about Punk. He's already beaten him. McIntyre wants to know why Randy Orton is getting a title shot before him. Of course, he addresses his concerns, and then he ends up walking away. Then we get ready for the Texas Tornado match of the Alpha Academy versus American Maid. Otis stares down the NXT North America champion, Obafemi, which I would not mind him coming to the, the red brand or coming to the main event roster. I feel like he's ready. He's poised. He's a great star. And more importantly, I'll be invested. The crowd ends up standing and watching things unfold between them having a face-to-face -face off. Once the match starts, the, the Creed's end up suplexing at the same time. And Tozawa dives directly onto being caught by Julius, who suplexes Tozawa onto the floor. The Creed's end up double teaming Otis, and since all four were illegally simultaneously, Tozawa surprises the Creed's with a cross body off the top ropes. Then things continue to accumulate as Otis picks up Tozawa and uses him as a battering ram over his shoulders, and literally ramming Julius and Brutus. Brutus rolls directly out the ring as Otis press Tozawa over the top ropes onto Julius and Brutus afterwards. Then, after the break, Tozawa tries to save Otis from getting powerbombed through the commentary desk, but Julius powerbombs him in the, to the barricade. Tozawa kicks out at a two count as the Kreese try to hit a double team move. Then, Tozawa counters with a double DDT. Otis hits the ring and clears everybody out. Julius dives off the top rope and catches Julius and then hits the world's strongest slam. Then he goes for that lovely caterpillar which Otis continues to deliver. Otis was broken up by the panfall by Brutus, and then Brutus flattens Otis with a standing moonsaw. Then he goes for a standing shooting star press, which was delivered by Julius, and then Tozawa breaks up the pin as Tozawa counters the top rope powerbomb with a Rana. Then we end up having Tozawa diving directly, but getting countered by caught on the ropes after... Um, a quick recovery. Tozawa goes to the top rope, but is cut off by the Creed brothers, who lifts him over their shoulders and onto Otis. And Otis suplexes Julius off the top, while Brutus 
lands on his shoulder, which is kind of nasty. More importantly, Tozawa follows up with the Sintom off the top rope on Julius and Julie, but Brutus breaks up the pin. Ivy now ends up hopping over the barricade and attacking Maxine Dupree and then hitting a dragon tamer on the commentary desk in the confusion. Otis gets off the apron and, of course, the Creed brothers end up knocking Otis down and then rolling up to Zawa to pick up the victory as American May secure the victory over no other than um, American Alpha. Not American Alpha, but, of course, the Alpha Academy. During the in after things broke down, we had an interview with Pete Dunn. Says he never wants to hear the name of Butch again. Dunn didn't need Seamus. Seamus needs him. And that concluded with everything from there. Then we switched to another backstage. A Bronson Reed tells Pierce to give him a challenge tonight or he'll find himself another victim instead. And then, of course, Adam Pierce looks like a chump, man. He just he's needs to figure himself out. He's looking like a weak GM right now. He needs to get himself together and not have these superstars running over him. Then we get the WWE Tag Team Champions, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, making their way to ringside to watch the next match for the number one contenders match of Shayna Baszler and Zoe Starks versus Damage Control in a decent um, match. Sky does a few flips to avoid Baszler, and then Shayna Baszler and Sky lands a simultaneous dropkick to Baszler. Baszler crawls into the corner and then lands a sliding diving elbow smash. Then things continue to progress as Baszler rolls out of the ring and then Starks hit along with Baszler was able to hit a backbreaker holding Zayn in place. They start off with a rolling clothesline by Starks after the break and then um, EO Sky ends up taking Baszler down and then Starks with a springboard with a double drop kick. Then we end up getting that bullet train attack by Sky, and then of course Starks kicks out at a two count. Things continue to progress throughout the majority of the match with a couple of double teams. Singh breaks up the pin, and Singh gets sent out to the ringside as Sky lands a butterfly backbreaker. As Sky goes to the top for her finisher for that lovely moonsault, DeVille hops on the apron to distract the referee, but Baser pushes Sky off the top rope. And the fight spills out into the ring. Stark accidentally super kicks Alba Fire at ringside, and Sky lands the over the moon moonsault. Before they can get things underway for to get secure the victory, the tag team champions end up getting into a normal contest to attack all the respective contenders. Pretty much, it's going to be set up as a three way for the WWE Women's um, Tag Team Championships. On the red brand. It's going to be intriguing and interesting. Maybe we get a fatal four-way at Bash of Berlin. Including adding no other than the ESTs of WWE. Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. But it will be intriguing to see how things make it accommodate. But we know we're going to get some great storylines. And be invested. We're finally getting some love back into the women's division tonight. Last week was like a bummer. But this week they finally stepped it up. Randy Orton. He's out for an in-ring segment. Randy Orton noticed that he was the first to win the world title 20 years ago at Bash in Berlin. History will repeat itself. Randy Orton says the World Heavyweight Championship, Gunther, and means the most to him. But then Gunther ends up interrupting. Orton tells the crowd to remember that moment. This is the last time they will see Gunther with the championship. Gunther says Orton is the one of the greatest of all times. Gunther noticed that Orton should be the greatest of all time, but he wasted all his natural talent. And this is the new era, the era of the ring general. There is no place for someone who wasted their potential or known that he has made more mistakes than anyone else in the locker room, which is true. He's had a bad attitude. He's grown in front of our eyes and he's become one of the greats of all time. But he learned from his mistakes and winning at life. Gunther says that he has some predictions for Orton. And Orton is going to be getting beaten the beaten of his life at Bash in the Berlin. Gunther adds that he will it'll be a matter of time, but a matter is at most is that Orton will screw it up. And Gunther tells Orton that he will screw it up just like his grandfather and his father, who are both screw ups. Orton gets fired up and kind of just shoves it off. Drew, of course, things accommodated. And then, of course, he claims that Orton is the biggest screw-up of them all. 
Orton and, and Gunther comes face to face, nose to nose. Drew McIntyre's music hits out of nowhere. He walks down to the ring. Orton drops Gunther with the RKO out of nowhere. You gotta love it. More importantly, McIntyre motions towards the ring. CM Punk hops over the barricade and attacks Drew McIntyre. McIntyre peels off his belt and tries to whip Punk, but Punk evades out the way, takes the belt from him, start whipping the dog mess out of um, Drew McIntyre as he escaped, and that thing broke things down. Then we get to Sheamus, who's in an interview with Jackie Redman. Um, pretty much, he said he had no idea why... Pete Dunn was so upset with him, but all Seamus has done is try to help Dunn. Louise Kaiser walks in and tells Seamus there's beef isn't over. Pete Dunn attacks Seamus from behind with a shillelagh, and a referee official tries to break it up. Dunn smashes um, Seamus' hand after the officials try to get involved, but he ends up most likely breaking Seamus' hand, so we might see him in a cast or something on those lines. But this storyline continues to get intriguing each and every single week. Then we get backstage with CM Punk. He lied about his traveling issues. The issues isn't about the bracelet. It's about the meaning behind it. More importantly, he said McIntyre can keep it. And that he has better keep his wife and his dog's name out of his mouth. Punk is happy that he came to Raw tonight. More importantly, he says he thinks he found a way to make everyone happy. Punk stares down at the belt, and McIntyre tries to attack him with it. But more importantly, he makes things calmly, so most likely it's going to end up being either being a strap match or something of those lines. Then we get ready for Big Bronson. Reed taking on the Miz, along with R-Truth. Reed charges in, eats a boot to the Miz, and then Miz tries to stick the move with a landing or a couple multiple strikes. Reed runs over to the Miz and then elbows him directly in the corner. Then he then next up big Bronson Reed sets up a senton and then rolls Miz rolls directly out the ring. Archu tries to help him over. Reed dives off the apron and forces Mid with a shoulder block. After the break, the Miz managed to bite off the offense, but more importantly, continue to progress and push forward throughout the combination of this actual match. Including a, a reversing sidewalk slam into a DDT for a near fall. But Big Rotary eats their it kicks and they have no effect on them. Basically no sell. Miz tries to springboard but then Reed catches him and then hits a DVD. Danny goes up to the top rope for that lovely tsunami and pins him and gets the victory over the Miz. Where things get more interesting is after the match. Reed goes to the top rope again for another tsunami. Our truth rolls directly in to save the Miz, who gets out the way. Reed leaps off the top rope and lands on our truth. And a repeat of last week. Then he ends up hitting the multiple tsunamis on our truth. The referees break it up, but it's making this man look dominant 100%. He yells out, of um, course, um, Adam Pierce yells at him to get down, and Reed does, but as everyone checks on R-Truth and goes for the other corner, hits a tsunami once again. Reed finally leaves, and Pierce follows up Reed directly up the ramp and berates him and yelling at him. Reed goes back to the ring and flattens R-Truth yet again with another tsunami. We go to backstage. My favorite guy, Jey Uso. He's hypes up Sami Zayn for his title match against Braun Breaker. When Zayn says he is done, they can focus on the tag titles. Zayn says they could become double. He could become a double champion, and they beat the Judgment Day once, and they'll do it again. And Jay daps each other, and then they get ready for the main event. We have the Intercontinental Championship for a two out of three falls match. This match was decent. We had Braun Breaker trading strikes back and forth with each other. They were getting things red hot when it came to this match. <laughs> things picked up when Braun Breaker went over the top and then Sami Zayn lands onto a dive. After the break, Breaker is working on Sami Zayn and lands an elbow, but Zayn hits the ropes and tries to leapfrog. Braun Breaker ends up plucking Sami Zayn's eyes out and then hit him in the air and hits a Steiner slam for a near fall. 
Dan Breaker tries the power bomb, but Sam Zim escapes, lands a tornado DDT, and Aaron Breaker fights out of the blue thunder bomb as Zayn tried to reverse the leapfrog, but gets caught with a German suplex, which was amazing. More importantly, Zayn kicked out, and then Breaker runs into the corner, and Zayn surprises him with a haluva kick out of nowhere. Zayn get the first near fall as Zayn's up 1-0. to zero. Braun Breaker rolls out the ring, and then follow up, um, Zayn follows. Breaker sends Sami Zayn into the barricade. Zayn hops and attempts to barricade Moonsault. But Breaker catches Zane and sends him into the timekeeper area with a running power slam. They had a couple of breaks in between where Breaker was able to hit the, the Breaker Steiner and then a Gorilla Press power slam. And then Breaker lands a spear and pulls down the straps and it hits another high or turn a spear. Which things broke down as we got one on one. As we end up having that lovely spear to put. Sami Zayn down through the mat. Breaker goes for a lazy pin and then, of course, it reverses to a pinfall of his own. Breaker kicks out and Sami Zayn rolls out of the ring and lay against the commentary desk. Breaker destroys Sami Zayn with a diving clothesline on the desk. Breaker rolls back in waiting for the two the count out, but Sami Zayn comes back in at 9.5. Things initially broke down as they continue to go back and forth, trading blows until Braun Breaker was actually able to secure the victory with this devastating spear to come out victorious and be still the Intercontinental Champion. And overall, this match was really decent. I enjoyed everything about this match. You got everything that you really wanted when it came to the combination of professional wrestling. I highly recommend for you guys to go check out this actual match because you will not be disappointed. More importantly, the show was decent when it came to out of a 10 star, pretty much I'll give it a 8.5 out of 10. Or if you're going to go on the Reddicks of a 5 star, 4.2 out of 5. They did a great job tonight. Triple H really put the storylines into effect. More importantly, all the initial matches really kept me invested. The show was 3 hours long, but it felt like it was worth it. More importantly, look forward. We had no whites on the, on the show tonight. We had no other drama going on. But we did have the segment from Uncle Howdy and as well as Bo Dallas having a nice little intertwined little VHS little recording, which is pretty decent. But importantly, I look forward to seeing how things continue to accommodate with the Wyatts. But more importantly, things are going to be looking good when it comes to all these storylines picking up towards Bash at Berlin. I appreciate you guys coming through and showing your love and support. More importantly, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, peace.